Hello, students of statics. Welcome to this solution video for quiz two in this fall uh, 2023 semester. And so for this quiz, we have three separate forces. We have F1, we have FOA, and we have F2. Each one is basically defined in a different way. Uh, the different ways that we have, uh, first of all, let's look at FOA. FOA has a, has a long line between point O up here to point A. Um, o is the origin. A has coordinates of 6, 5, negative 3.5 in meters. And then FOA is a 3 kilonewton force existing along that line. So if we have a force along a line, for that one we'll need a unit vector. Um, so the unit vector will basically be derived from the position vector. Once you have the unit vector, we then can multiply the unit vector times that force vector. Okay, so that unit vector we could draw on here, and that would be right here, and we could put this as OA hat. All right, and then the full uh, position vector, I'll just kind of draw it parallel so it's not right over the top of everything, but it's right there, right? And we can call that OA as a vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on that one. So we have, since that um, vector goes all the way from the origin out to that point, it's pretty easy to find its coordinates. We have that OA vector is equal to, it's a hard bracket for vector components, 6, 5, 5, and those are meters. Now if we're going to turn this into a unit vector, we need to find its overall magnitude. So OA length using the Pythagorean theorem is 6 squared plus 5 squared plus 3.5 squared. So totaling that out, we get 8.558. That's in meters. We then find the unit vector dividing the components by the length. Now, we don't really need all three of them here. I'll go ahead and write all three of them out. We just really need the Z component. Um, 6 divided by 8.56, uh, 5 divided by 8.6, and then negative 3.5 And again, the units on this are meters divided by meters, and so those units do cancel out. The only one we need is a Z component. And so for the last step here, we could say F O A sub Z is equal to that component. So negative 3.5 divided by um, 8.558, bring it all the way out three digits there. So that unit vector component times three kilonewtons. And we end up with an answer for that one of negative 1.227 kilonewtons. All right. The next force we'll look at is the X component of F2. Now for F2, which is this vector coming down here, a couple things to notice. One of those, it's gonna have a negative Y component. It's down below this X, Z plane, right? The X, Z plane is really defined by this part of these extension lines. We're below that, right? If you take a look at the two angles, we have 50 and 60. Now, if you thought that these are both in the X, Z plane, there should be a huge red flag when you say, hmm, 50 plus 60 is like 110. There's only 90 degrees um, in any of these orthogonal planes. Those are not planar angles. Um, also noticing that they're going all the way from the X axis here and Y axis down to the vector. Right, not to an extension of the vector, not to projection of the vector, down to the vector itself. So these are direction cosine angles. And being direction cosine angles, we basically take the cosine of either of these two angles times the vector magnitude to get those components. If we needed the y, we need a little bit more math, but on this problem, we are only asked about the x. And so let's do that one real quick. So again, this one is direction cosine angles. I'll add a note here on the top one up here. This is a um, position vector, then a unit vector. These unit vector define a force vector. So that was for um, a force along a line. Okay, so direction cosine angle is that angle from the x axis down to F2 is 60 degrees. And so I'm just going to take 4 kilonewtons times the cosine of 60, and I'll have that answer. Okay, so F2 sub x is equal to 4 kilonewtons times the cosine of 60 degrees. 
cosine of 60 is the same thing as the sine of 30, which is a half, and so we end up with two kilonewtons, half of the total magnitude. All right, the last one. We have F1, and we have two different triangles here. Okay, we have a light gray triangle here, which is, I'm going to highlight in yellow, and then we have a dark gray triangle down there in the XZ plane. Okay, so that, um, that triangle has a right angle corner that's here in that corner. And so we need to do first, in order to find the X component of F1, what we're really looking for there, X component of F1, is this length along this side right here. So two-step process. One is going to be to project F1 down into this XZ plane. This angle here will be 50 degrees, since this complementary angle up to the Y-axis there is 40. So first we'll take F1... Um, times the cosine of 50 and then we'll use that as the hypotenuse of a new triangle and then do that value and we're going to call it F1XZ that times the sine of 30 right sine being for the opposite side of the triangle so a two-step process there so these are with spherical type angles I say spherical type angles because these angles were given a little bit differently than just angles from the x-axis and the xy plane and from the z-axis. And so first we project F1 down into the x-z plane. So F1 x-z, that's going to equal 2.5 cosine of 50 degrees. Now noting that this is just a length. Right? We're not really talking about this as a vector component necessarily. Therefore, uh, we don't really need to give it a sign because we're just using it as a length of triangles. Now, we do need to observe directions as we get down to the component itself. And so F1x, again, using this value as the hypotenuse now for that 30 degree angle. So I could write this out. I am going to throw this negative out front because we are going the negative x direction to the left on our diagram. So negative F1. And so what we'll do there is we'll take this value here as our F1XZ and compute that. And we end up with a negative 0.8035 kilonewtons. Notice all the terms have units of kilonewtons. If you use newtons, that was fine, um, as long as you had the equivalent numerical value. Um, and we carried things out enough to have within about 1% accuracy on our computations. So three different techniques, three different computations. This is a fairly basic quiz. Okay, So if you struggled with this one, you definitely need to dig in on these three-dimensional um, information systems. Right, All three of these are different ways to define three-dimensional vectors. Because we're going to keep building from here. Okay, we're going to start using these vectors to do lots of other things, including the dot products and things we've already seen. We're going to do cross products. Um, we're going to do lots of different computations. And so make sure this is a very basic skill. Build on this. Thanks for your hard work. I appreciate you. Hope you're having a great day.